Hey guys, how you doing? Joe McCall here from the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. Really glad you're here. Got something cool for you. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite investing strategies, land investing. And we're going to be talking with a pro who's been doing it for a long time and got some really, really cool things to talk about in terms of Facebook and how Facebook is changing the landscape for finding sellers and buyers um, for land investing. Now, this also will apply to whether you're doing houses uh, or land or commercial or anything. So this applies to the entire real estate investing industry. So I want you to pay attention. It's going to be a very, very important podcast. Facebook isn't going away. <clears throat> whether you're doing paid ads to get sellers and buyers, like I said, it's really important you understand how you can actually use Facebook to your advantage and not let Facebook take advantage of you because there's a right way and a wrong way to do your marketing on Facebook. I think we could all agree with that, right? Um, so cool. I just wanted to announce a couple of things here first before we invite Dave to come on here. Um, number one, this podcast is brought to you uh, by LendingForDeals.com. LendingForDeals.com. This is a company I've partnered with that lends in all 50 states, all different types of deals. They have tens of thousands of different types of programs and lenders that they work with. This is the first nationwide, it's kind of like the lending tree for houses, but this is for real estate investors. And uh, just check it out. You know, you can get a free proof of funds there too. You can get your transactional funding, residential lending, um, commercial buildings, residential buildings, uh, bridge loans, uh, uh, single family, residential rental homes. Uh, you can do uh, like your Burr strategy <clears throat> where you're just uh, buying and refinancing or whatever. Um, they lend it all. And it's very, uh, I know the guy who runs the company and I stand behind him, but go check it out. Lendingfordeals.com. Lendingfordeals.com. Boom. There I got it. I got it on the thing. And uh, check it out. It's free to check it out. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and the other thing I wanted to, uh, to uh, ask you guys, number one, is if you are listening to this podcast or if you like to listen to podcasts, some of you right now are watching this live on Facebook and YouTube. But if you're if you like to listen to podcasts, please subscribe to the podcast, realestateinvestingmastery.com, realestateinvestingmastery.com, as I'm trying to fix my screen here. Uh, the Real Estate Investing Mastery podcast is something that I've been doing since 2011. It's a passion project of mine. I really, really um, am excited and passionate about it. I do three episodes a week. Some of them I do like this on videos. Some of them I do from my phone while I'm driving in my car. And it's just something that I think that uh, it's just a way for me to teach you guys what is going on in the industry. I'm really trying to stay tuned on, on trends, on things that are working today, things that aren't working, things that are going on in my real estate investing business, some of my students and clients and friends, and <clears throat> I've been doing it a long time. I love it. We have over 5 million downloads. It's crazy. It's hard to believe. We have listeners in over 170 different countries. And please, I want you to subscribe to the podcast. Go to Apple Podcasts or Google Play or Spotify just subscribe to the podcast. That way you'll get notified when new episodes come out. And we come out with three episodes a week. All right. So that's enough of that. I'm going to bring Dave. Dave, how are you doing, man? Are you there? Hey, Joe. How's it going, man? Dave Van Steenkist. Did I say that right? You got it, man. You got it. Van Steenkist. Uh, Dave is a guy that I met um, through the interweb somewhere. Um, and I forget. You were on a podcast. You were, on a, you were on a podcast. I think it, um, I don't want to say who it was because maybe it wasn't him. <laughs> I'll be embarrassed <laughs> myself. Um, and I reached out to Dave and I said, hey, listen, I love what you were talking about. And I wanted to, to um, ask you some questions about some things that I had going on. And uh, Dave is uh, one of the uh, several friends of mine that do a lot of land investing deals. And he's spot on in his, how he does it. And it's not something that um, has to be a full-time job. It's not something that's going to take up your nights and weekends. You can do land investing as a full-time income or as a side hobby if you still have your job and you still want to work. And so I asked Dave if we could get him on and talk about land investing. And he said, yeah, but let's also talk about Facebook because uh, face a lot of things are happening in Facebook and, and it's going to be, I think, beneficial to people who are doing land investing and those that aren't. Um, so cool. Let me say one more thing, Dave. Uh, those of you that are watching live right now on Facebook or YouTube, please go ahead and say hi in the comments and tell us where you're from. Uh, if you go into the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments, tell us hello, tell us where you're from, give us a thumbs up, like this video and share it if you want to, because we just like to say hi 
And like there's Michael right here. I think you might know Michael Batista. Uh, hi, Joe. Hope my message finds you well. It does, Michael. I'm glad you're here. Thanks a lot. Um, okay, Dave, How talk a little bit about uh, your background and how you got into real estate investing. And I want to ask you specifically uh, why you chose land investing. Sure. Well, oh gosh. Uh, you know, I had a career in uh, engineering and sales, uh, you know, for quite a while. Uh, I ended up um, selling my company and moving over to Europe and living in Sweden for uh, about two, three years. And uh, when we came back uh, to the States, uh, I was looking for things to do. Uh, I ended up helping a buddy with a startup and then I started studying about real estate. Uh, this was kind of uh, during the downturn uh, after things were starting back up again, maybe 2011, 2012, and uh, I started flipping houses uh, with the goal of collecting rentals. Uh, didn't quite get as many rentals as we'd like, but uh, flipped quite a few houses. Um, the market here in Denver got pretty tight pretty quickly. I mean, it recovered very fast. And um, I learned about land investing and I thought, gosh, this is, uh, this sounds interesting. And I think I learned about it on, on a podcast way back in the day. And, uh, you know, the thing that kept getting frustrating to me, I was a fix and flipper. So I was on all the, the wholesalers text list and I would get a text, take a quick look at it, at it online and literally be on the property within 45 minutes and it's gone. That's amazing. It happened over and over and over and um uh you know to get enough deals you know you got to do your own marketing but you also have to be hooked up with the wholesalers as well so you have enough deals in the pipeline and um when i saw land and saw gosh it moves a lot more slowly i don't need to rush out and go look at a property in fact i never have to go step on it i've done over 150 deals and i've never set foot on one single property and let's let's talk about land investing is real quick. And I know you're telling your story, yeah. but this is important. Some people are thinking, what? You're going out and do, you're buying, you know, a couple hundred acres in the city and you're developing it. And what no, what do you mean by land investing? Yeah. So yeah, thank you, because we want to address your audience versus being on a land investing podcast. So um really, you know, guys, we're taking we're looking at stuff that's rural, that's typically not near any development. Uh, you've got large acreage that's, you know, in a kind of a two to three hour radius of a significant metro area. You don't want it to be too far out because then you may not have too many buyers. You always want to start with your buyer in mind first. But people love large recreational acreage to do anything from, you know, just go out, ride their motorcycles, shoot their guns, camp, uh, do things that, um, you know, go have fun with it on the weekends to maybe homesteading it. Uh, and then there's other lots like um, maybe someplace that somebody might want to build a cabin that's smaller, that's in the hills, that's treed, maybe has a little infrastructure. But this is essentially buying very low and reselling low and quickly. And also many of these properties have, you're into them such a small amount of money you can sell them with seller financing and create cash flow for yourself and, and recoup your capital very quickly. And it's also uh, a strategy that you can get into with very little capital. Um, Give an example deal, maybe one a recent one you've done, a typical yeah, deal. So, so, you know, a typical deal, uh, I'll give you a typical and then some, some, a couple of wows, you know, and it's like anything, don't expect the wows, the home runs, but if you keep putting one foot in front of the other and you stay focused and you stay at it, those will come. You, you keep hitting base hits and then occasionally a double, triple, and occasionally a home run. Um, so a, a very typical deal, if I, if I just look at the, I had uh, my first 100 deals, I had them averaged out. My average price I paid for a deal was $4,700. My average price that I paid cash or that I sold cash for one of those deals was around 12 and a half grand. And then on terms, I think my average, so at seller financing, the average was about uh, $18,000. What was your average so, monthly payment when you sold it on terms? Um, uh, that's not on the top of my head, but like two, two, two to 250. 200 you know, to $250 a month. Yeah. 
for a property that you paid an average of um, forty seven hundred dollars. Forty seven hundred dollars. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. And then, no. you know, you get, you know, one to two thousand dollars down. So I typically try to structure it so that my all of my capital is repaid within uh, 12 months or less of selling it, not not of my actual hold time. Um, and then my average hold time was 76 days. That's from um, when you bought it to when you sold it with cash or, or when you bought it and sold it either way. Either way. Okay, either so way. You, you can sell your prop. You buy them with cash and you can mm -hmm. sell them either with cash, like to a cash buyer um, or to an uh, on terms or owner financing. Right. Right. And this is the amazing thing that I love about land. And I've done probably about 25, 25 to 30 deals, maybe more of our own vacant land in Oregon, Colorado. Um, yeah, Oregon, that's it. Doing a little bit in Florida, but that's not working out too great. Um, and it's that our, that's about our averages as well. Um, we make an average of five to seven thousand dollars cash on each one. We've not done any owner financing on one, but here's the cool thing about it. What, what kind of house can you go out and buy for five thousand dollars that gives you two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a month in cash flow? Yeah. And you don't have any of the tenant hassles and headaches and things like that, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can go out and buy a rental property by the time you get lending on it and everything, you know, you might have a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollar loan or more. And you, and by the time everything washes out, you're lucky to cash flow $250 a month. Right now, the, obviously we don't get, um, you don't get tax depreciation and some tax benefits with land Correct. that you do with houses. Um, there's a bigger demand for houses than there is for land. Correct. Um, but so t talk about, I know a lot of people are thinking, what on earth, like, how do you find that land and why, how can you buy it without going to see it? Can you talk mm -hmm. about that for a minute? Absolutely. So, you know, the thing about land is it's much more out of sight, out of mind to people than it is a house. Yeah. Um, and how many size, how many average acres are we talking about too? Gosh, you know, all over the board, but I mean, I love large uh, rural stuff, 20, 40, 80 acres. I mean, I've done a lot of forties. That's and you're all... buying them for like 20 cents on the dollar. Yeah. I mean like, um, yeah, like 20. I mean, if you figure I pay, you know, five grand for a 40 acre, that's 125 bucks an acre. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, turn around and sell that for 300 bucks an acre cash. Okay. Uh, maybe so 500 you... terms. Yeah. Uh, and, and just explaining on the terms for your viewers, well, wait, why is he charging more for the terms? The way I position it is if you want seller financing with like the minimal amount down, it's, it's re it's my retail price. And then there's an incentive to pay cash. So I have a big, big discount for cash. Uh, that's, that's how I position it. Okay. And how do you find this, this land? So uh, almost a hundred percent direct mail. Um, you know, I use, uh, you know, some various methods to figure out, you know, those, that two to three hour radius outside major metros. And there's some some various metrics that we use, and I use a tool called Data Tree. You can use Agent Pro or CoreLogic. I really like Data Tree uh, to filter down my lists and um, and send out mail. And uh, you know, it's not a it's not a distressed situation. So, some people use the method to to uh, target uh, properties that have tax liens on them, um, but. Uh, I find that uh, you, there's no need to, you're, you're leaving too much out there. There's plenty of people who uh, are detached from the property. They may live in the same state. They may live out of state, but it's typically a story that Ma and Pa bought this property 40 years ago, 30 years ago, and they had uh, dreams and aspirations of uh, building, uh, you know, maybe moving out there and retiring out there, building a cabin out there. And it just never, the years bet went by and they paid taxes on the property and nothing ever, they didn't, they never did anything. Um, mm -hmm. Now maybe one of them passed on and, and, and Ma gets the, gets my letter and says, you know what, I'm not going to do anything with this. I maybe have called realtors in the past to ask them to list it. And they're at, a lot of these properties are at price points where realtors are not interested in listing them. Uh, there, there's just not enough juice in the squeeze for a realtor. They'd rather go sell a two, $300,000 house and make the commission on that. 
um, than sell a piece of land. And many of them just don't specialize in land, so they don't know it very well. And so that's really the niche. And it's just finding people, it, they're not in a distressed situation, but it is situational. It's it's not about the asset or the value. It's just about their situation. And they yeah. could they get your letter and they could use some cash. Yeah, it's, I, I use this analogy a lot too. It's like you go to the garage sale and you see a treadmill that um, is for sale for 50 bucks. But they paid like $2,000 for it. And you think, why on earth would they sell a treadmill that works still works for $50 that they paid $2,000 for. Well, it's because every time they see it, it reminds them of how fat they are and how they're not using it. And they're getting tired of seeing clothes hanging from it, right? And their right. wife is mad at them for ever buying it in the first place. And they just want it. Or, or the wife is selling it because the husband bought it and never used it. And they just want right. to get rid of it. Exactly. And that's what it's like with land. I mean, people just are sick of it. They're sick of the taxes and they just need some extra money. And like, we're never going to go there anyway. The taxes usually aren't that much, but they're like, you know, they think about it when it comes tax time. Like, why am I, why do I have this? Yeah. You know, and, uh, and then they pay it and then, or they don't. And um, so, yeah. Okay. So uh, when you send your direct mail, what does it say? Is it just like, is it a postcard? Is it a letter? Um, is it an offer, a blind offer? Yeah. So great question. I do, I utilize the uh, letters. And I, I test between a one and a two page letter. I've got a couple of different templates, uh, but I prefer blind offers, which is a, an actual offer contract that they sign. It does have a, a counter offer line on it. Um, I find that my uh, deal rate is higher with uh, blind offers, um, but I do a combination of both. Um, you know, for example, cause with blind offers, it's it's more work up front to figure out the area, figure out kind of the uh, average price per acre, and then what you're going to offer on that. And there's variations with, within the land. You know, you're going to hit some of it spot on, some of it you're going to be a little high, and some of it you're going to be a little little low. Um, and if they if you get responses, then you know you know you may need to negotiate. Sometimes you just get that letter signed back. Yes, please buy it. <laughs> And, but, um, I use, a, I use a program called land speed and it has a really great feature where a, I can, I can just throttle out, you know, 10 a day over to this area and five a day over to this area. So I can be, have a wide coverage and it keeps my business very even. But what I really love about it is, um, I worked with Howard, uh, the owner of land speed, which we're um, going to have him on a podcast, by the way, coming up. Yeah. Here. And you, and people are asking, what did he say? Land speed, land yeah. speed, just Google it and you'll find it. Yeah. So, um, Oh, what was my train of thought here? Um, Oh yeah. So we set up a, a, um, feature where in our, when we price our offers in our spreadsheet and then we import it into land speed to mail, we can, we can enable two templates, a blind off template and a neutral template. A neutral is, as you know, what's most common with houses and things like that. Hey, I want to, I'm interested in buying your property. Call me basically. Um, and so now that has much less work on the front end, but on the back end, if you get a lot of responses, then you've got to run and comp all those properties and everything. So, uh, but what I love about it is sometimes I may price a county. I'll look at a county and if I've got, you know, large swaths of properties in a, in a, in a subdivision or in a particular area, and I can come up with a price per acre in that area and then just drag it down my list. And I've got that whole area priced. Now you've got little clusters all over the county, two or three here, one there. I don't want to really take my time and, and price those out. It takes too much time. So instead of just throwing a, a get, basically a guess in and throwing them a blind offer, I leave a zero in the offer column and land speed knows to use a neutral letter for those offers. Oh, really? Yeah. How about that? And then how does land speed, land speed is, uh, there's, I think of land speed, I think of two things. One of them is it's just a really awesome spreadsheet where you copy and paste data from Zillow, actives and solds in there and it just calculates it out and gives you averages, right? 
That's actually Price Boss. So that's another product by Landspeed. That's ah. that's Price Boss that helps you uh, price the areas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Landspeed is the CRM. Yeah. Basically. Okay. That's right. Yes. Um, so I've used um, Price Boss. Yeah. From the same guy who created yes. Howard. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's that. That's cool. Now, what does? I'm just curious personally. What does? What service does? Landspeed use for the direct mail. How, who sends it out? Or they just give it to you to print? No, it's integrated with click to mail. Okay. So cool. it's it's beautiful. And with the contract, if you're a Landspeed customer, you can send one letter or ten thousand letters at the same price. That is so it just it's integrated into click to mail. Yeah. To go ahead and, and and so even when you're, you know, the when you get your neutral letter, uh when you send out your neutral letters, you get somebody who's interested, um, and then you want to send them your offer. You just put the numbers into land speed, click, send them a letter, and off it goes. That's cool. And are they using Podio in the back end for yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, the uh, So you prefer the blind offers. How do you determine the offer to make? And let's say you're targeting 20 to 40 acres in a certain city area. Oh. A lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there's – there's, there's as much art as there is science. Um, but typically you're going to go look at sites like Zillow, like, and, and for the bigger properties, Zillow's not as, as good, but then you, so, but for the small stuff, smaller stuff in the closer in, maybe cabin lots and things, you're going to have better data on Zillow. But so we use Zillow, we use Landwatch, Lands of America, is also very good. I like Lands of America a lot because it has the map function. Yeah. And so, you know, you could zoom into that and put up data, the data tree map next to it and kind of figure out the area. Cause you know, it's not like houses where you've got subdivisions for yeah. everything. You're, you're kind of looking at a general area over here say and matching your maps up. Okay. Like that, or you could print a map out and just make notes. Okay. I'm seeing stuff approximately over here in this this size range uh is the kind of this average price per acre and this price per acre so well, this is one of my burning questions i've had this forever and mm -hmm. i know i it's funny because every time i answer it i go oh that makes sense and then two months later i'm like asking the same question again because i forgot yeah okay so you're looking at comps and you're looking you, you want to make an offer on a 20 acre lot and you're looking at comps, you you find sometimes two different comps there. You find investor comps, what investors are paying for it. Yeah. And then what retail buyers are paying for it. Yeah. Okay. So when you're making your offer, yep. which of those two do you look at? And how do you do you do you disc do you make an offer even less than what investors are buying it for? No. I if so, so if you're looking at data tree and the data is available in that county, it's not always, depends on if it's a disclosure state and all that. Um, but let's just assume that sold data is available in, in data tree. Um, I use, and, and I can figure out, yeah, that's, that's, I know that investor, or that's probably an investor, uh, price. Um, I look at that as being my offer price in that area. Okay. If I, if I find some of those, I'm not going to offer below that. I'm like, okay. They paid that, but then I'm going to look at in land. It's, it's so much different than houses because in houses, What's really important are your sold comps yeah. in, in, in land. It's what's for sale right now, because the data is not easily available. Uh, there's so many land transactions that, that transact until you get way up into the high end properties. Uh, but there's so many land land transactions that happen privately. They're quick claim to a family member and things like that. So you just don't have the comparable comparable data. So it's really, all right, what am I going to be competing against when I get this property and I need to sell it? So I'm going to look at the the for sales. And if there's enough data, I'm going to average them or do the median. I'm going to throw out the high highs and the ridiculous lows and make an offer based on that, uh, you know, 20 to 40 percent of the of the median price of the actives of the actives. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, you know, you're going to see stuff. And, and the, one of the things where Zillow is is nice is you can see days on market and, and glean kind of an idea. You can also look at how many views 
those properties are getting at the certain price points and then how many saves they're getting. Um, and, and there's not really a formula for it. It's just you, the more you look at it, you kind of get a feel. That's where you have to spend a lot of time. And I call it easy chair time. Uh, you know, I'll do these kind of activities where I'm kind of researching, you know, on a Friday, Saturday night when I'm watching TV or something um, or watching sports. I'll, I'll do that kind of research. Yeah. Let me get this. I think people would be interested in this. And uh, I've been looking at a certain county in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, Latimer County. Do you, do you mind if I share my screen with you? Not at all. Related to what we're talking about here. And I think this will be, and I know you all are listening. Some of you are all listening to the audio and I'll try to share what I'm saying here. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, application window, Chrome tab. Zillow. So here we go. Okay. Do you see this, uh, my Zillow here? I do. Okay. I'm looking at Latimer County, Oklahoma, um, for sale, lots or land only, and more is 10 to 20 acres. Okay. Okay. And there's only seven here. I've sorted this low to high. So I see a 10 acre for 19 grand, 20 acre, a 10 acre for 20, 10 for 24, which tells that's, those are three decent solid. Yep you know, uh, active comps. I'm just looking at that. Yep. Ones, okay. Um, if, if without looking at solds yet, um, what would you look at this say? All right, well, if I'm going to advertise a property, that's a 10 acre lot in Latimer County, I need to price it at what? Well, I would, let's see, you got the, you got 20 grand, basically 20 grand for those two 10 acre properties and then 24 grand for the 20. Okay. So, yeah, you're looking at 20, 20, an average of about 20. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. um, I would shoot to want to sell it for, uh, you know, 20% less than the lowest one. Okay. So I'd probably be looking at, you know, trying to target it at, at, at 16, 17,000 bucks to sell it. And then about I'll work cash. Back. That would be your cash yeah, price. Okay. That would be my cash price. And then I'd want to um, work backwards from there and offer where I want my margin to be. Um, so if you want to make if you want to make 10 grand on it, you would offer six thousand dollars. Yep. On a 10 acre lot, right? Yep. Okay. So let's I, I like that. Um, you'd want to sell it for about 16 grand. Yeah. Um, which is now about the only, the, the only thing there is, and, and you don't have a lot of data there and it's, and it's the whole County, you know, so that's about the best you can do with yeah. which is what we just did. Now I would maybe check on lands of America and see if you have some more data there because lands of America is going to give you the map. It's going to be better on, uh, on big rural stuff. Um, but I'll usually, if there's enough data, I'll zoom into an area yeah. um, and, and, and make my, and then, and then what I'll do is in data tree, I'll make a polygon in about that area. Okay. And that'll be a list for that area. And then I'll, then I'll combine the list in Excel, but I'll download them all separately. Um, it, it probably wasn't, uh, I probably didn't pick the best County as an example either, because it is a small County and I don't know why I picked it. Um, Somebody told me one time how much they love Latimer County in Oklahoma. That's okay though. It, but it, um, so now you got some solds there. So these are solds from Zillow. And I, I widened my search out uh, to five to fifty acres. Okay. And I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but like when you're looking at if you're and I sorted this low to high, I and mean, you see a five acre lot here that sold for eighteen thousand five hundred. If I just got a quick calculator, um, mm -hmm. eighteen thousand five hundred divided by Five, that's 3,700 an acre. Yeah. That was probably an investor who bought it maybe. And this was just three months ago, four months ago. Um, who knows? Uh, yeah. Who knows? I mean, you've got a lot of variations too. I mean, that's why, so when you have enough data like that um, and it's spread out like that, that's when you want to just put it all in there and and calculate the median price. Okay. Um, that's one yeah. of the nice things that, that, uh, that uh, price boss does is you can just scrape all that and paste it into a price box instead of uh, doing them all at one time. Um, but you know, there's so many variations when you go county wide like that. Um, you've got 
the different attributes. Does it have power? Does it have water? And, uh, and things like that. So, um, and, and you could spend time, uh, analyzing the heck out of all of it. Um, it, you just have to know that if you can find it, get it in there, find a decent median price, make an offer on a percentage on that. Some people are going to get it and be like, these guys are out of their mind. I got water and everything. And you're not going to get those deals. Yeah. And then, you know, you send enough mail, you're going to get, you're going to get deals, but you just can't spend too much time being, um, getting analysis paralysis. That's an easy trap to get in. Like I'm doing this, this with my two boys right now. I have a 16 year old boy and a 14 year old boy and they're wanting to get into real estate. And I like land for them because they don't have to talk to sellers. And, right. um, they just, I don't, I mean, they're mature. They're great kids. I don't know if they have the maturity yet to, to talk and negotiate right houses with, with sellers. I mean, maybe I'm underestimating them. Uh, but I, what, I'm, what we're doing is we're sending neutral letters and uh, we have a reference letter on the top, you know, of yep. the letter. And so when they call, it goes right to voicemail and the voicemail mm -hmm. says, Hey, thanks for calling. Please give us the reference number that's on the letter and we will send you an offer. And uh, that's it. So they leave the reference number. We're getting about 10% response rate on our letters that are for that. And uh, then my boys get that and we're using um, REI simple, which is a white labeled version of freedom soft that I have. Okay. And, uh, they go in and they do the research and they tell me what they think they should, we should offer. And then I review that. And right now I'm the bottleneck because they're waiting on me to send about 30 <laughs> offers right now. That's great. Um, so it's going good. And we, you know, we've done, we've done already quite a few deals. The thing that, what's, um, conversion rate? what's been your conversion rate after that 10, 10% 10 response rate is very high. Well, um, I can tell you because we made some, we made our offers were too high and we got too many accepted. Um, so let me just look real quick. We had a 10% response rate. Um, so we got, we sent out 1600 letters and, uh, we got seven contracts. So Not bad. yeah. Um, Pretty good. it's very good these days, well, but, but were they, but were they too high? Did you have to walk them back? You know what? They weren't, I mean, they were decent deals. They were, they were good. But then after they said yes to our offer, I'm looking at it thinking, oh, man, I, we could have offered half of this. We should have offered half of that, you know, or like sometimes, you know, by the time you send the offer, another property came active. That's less than what we were wanting to sell ours for. And that changes things, right? Yeah. Um, or I, I was planning yeah. on selling these for cash. And then I look at the comps closer and I realize, oh, some of these other guys, they're advertising that price for for on terms for owner financing. So if I'm going to have to, I don't know if I could sell it for cash because everybody who's selling land there in this particular county is selling it with owner financing. So I don't know. I'm just overthinking it, overanalyzing it. I, what If you were to train a, a teenager boy, a kid, <laughs> how do you, you got a property, you know, you know, the uh, location of that lot in just a, how would you train them to, to determine an offer? Hmm. Teenage boy. Let's see, dad. Okay. Girls. <laughs> um, teach them how to comp it out. Yeah. I, I, I've been using Zillow because that's easy yeah. for them to get into Zillow. Yep. I, I, I think you got to have them use Zillow and have them use, uh, I think lands of America is a very good tool because it's got the map. So yeah. you can, you can zoom in and, and look at those properties. Um, you got to take something into and, and it. It also depends on price point too, because if, it, if it's in a price point where you've got some realtors in there playing um, the, I, you know, I find that for the most part, anything that's listed by a realtor with land yeah. is usually on the high side. Yeah. So you got to take that into account and you're going to have more realtor stuff on Zillow than you will on, Lands of America because Zillow's free. What um, I've done is um, I've looked at what the actives are listed for on Zillow, and I get an average price per square foot. And to get the value of the land, I take about eighty percent of that is what the land is probably worth. Sure. And then to when we make our offer, it's about twenty five percent of that. So I get if I, if I'm trying to figure out what the what is this property worth, I take about the the average or the median price per acre of the active listings, multiply yep. that by 80%. And then for our offer, we offer 25% of that. 
Um, that's a, that's a good method. I, I I use a very similar method. Okay. I may use the median instead of the average. Okay. But if you're manually knocking off the ridiculous highs and the ridiculous lows, the average will be the you know very close to what the median is. Okay. Um, but when I was but, looking yeah. at solds, what always threw me though was when we were looking at sold comps. Um, I hope we're not diving too deep in the weeds because some of you guys are listening to this thinking, what are they talking about? <laughs> well, let's when just I, take that another 30 seconds and then we'll okay. move on. All right, well, then we'll move on because we are going to talk about Facebook. And we're yeah. getting people here that are saying good stuff. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> and Victor's saying offer low and then go high. You're absolutely right. Um, okay, so the uh, when I look at solds before, I was combining all the solds in and I realized I'm... And then I was doing a 25% of that. And I think sometimes I was offering way too low and, and cause I knew the investors were offering, let's say a thousand dollars an acre. Cause I knew those were investors that were buying those properties. Um, but I was going in and offering $250 an acre cause that's 25% of that. But I probably should have been offering closer to what those investors were offering on those properties. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're seeing comps where you know that they were investors, then you've got to take that into account. Uh, they're already buying it at what you, you know, the intended margin that, that you want to buy it at, you, okay. you hope, you hope. Well, that, you know. well yeah, <laughs> that, that clarifies things a little bit. Um, and I too like data tree. Um, it's not, um, it's not uh, cheap, but uh, I, I found it to be really, really good, especially when you're looking for, for land. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so you, you could caveat that. I mean, it's not cheap, but if you're, if you're mailing every month, Oh yeah. You know, it's not actually a subscription. You're just pre-buying your data. Now, if you don't buy any data and mail, then it's a cost. Yeah, yeah. And that you, but if you're mailing, it, it, there's no additional cost to it. The good thing about Data Tree that I found that's better than like ListSource or those is um, it allows you to search better for improved values. In other words, like you can't go to ListSource for whatever silly reason and say, show me all the properties, anything, houses or land that has zero improved value. An improved value is a lot with anything built on it. And I've, right. I've even actually talked to the guys at list source about that. And they say, well, if you, we leave that out intentionally. So you'll get the higher end real quest, you know, real quest subscription thing. Um, right. So you can't, but the data tree allows you to um, search better for zero improved value on a property yeah. and also lets yeah. you search for um, um, unknown things, which is something good that I like to look for too. You know, if, if, if there, if there's, if the mortgage amount is unknown, that usually means there isn't a mortgage. Um, right. So anyway, okay. Uh, Dave, um, you've done 150 something land deals. Is that what you said? Something like that. Yeah. That's awesome. They're, you can take. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's talk about Facebook. You've, uh, yeah. how, how do you use Facebook? Do you find sellers on Facebook or buyers or, or what? You know, uh, I have not tried to find sellers yet, but I believe I, I, I've heard of some people doing it and I, and I think there is some uh, possibility to do that. Uh, but for buyers, yeah, I mean, you advertise in the marketplace and on various buy sell groups um, and that's all free. It just takes labor. Um, and, and typically, you know, you set up your schedule, set up your plan set up your copyright and then have a virtual assistant um, place all the ads, reply to the, the uh, comments. I, I, I haven't found nor have I heard anybody really being very successful with paid advertising for, for land on uh, Facebook. But uh, certainly I think Marketplace is uh, replacing Craigslist for sure. Yeah. Um, makes me sad in one way. I mean, uh, Craigslist actually, I used to get, I, I used to sell, get lots of leads off of Craigslist. Craigslist used to be fantastic, but they just started changing their algorithms and making it harder and harder to do what we do. And it just became such a hassle. Uh, a few months ago, I actually just quit Craigslist. Um, yeah. and, um, but I think the quality of leads is still a little better than on Facebook. Facebook, you've got this big funnel and you got a lot of top of funnel leads in there because it's so easy. It's one click, people are scrolling one click. Is this available? And, you know, 90% of the time they're not really interested, but there's so much volume. There's so many people on Facebook that, 
you know, it's resulting in, in sales. It's just your, your lead to, to sale ratio is very low, but there's a lot of people on it. Um, and so I just have a, um, I just have links with a landing page that I just have my VA go in and respond to the messenger messages and just pop the link to a landing page in there. Um, and really don't even engage. So will Facebook marketplace let you put a link to your property listing in the actual um, listing itself, like a, to a website? They'll let you put a map link in there. You know, it keeps changing and my VA has been doing it. So I got to tell you, I don't remember. I haven't posted an ad at myself in so long. Uh, but, um, you know, they'll usually, people will just uh, reply via messenger and then then we'll pop up a, a link to a web landing page in there. So we capture their name and their email address and then it lets them on to the to see the property on our website. Um, and then, so, you know, if, if they don't engage further, you know, they're in our funnel and they may have been interested, they may have been playing around, but at least you get, you keep people in there and keep them on your mailing list. I mean, I've, I've sold properties to people couple of years later, uh, after they, you know, maybe they saw something and it wasn't quite right and, or they weren't quite ready. And then a couple of years later, they got our, uh, our, uh, uh, newsletter and bought a property. Um, so when they, when you are advertising a, a piece of land there, when somebody messages you, you can send them a link to your listing website yeah. to get more information, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the easiest way to search for link. Cause I'm on Facebook marketplace right now yep. and I can share my screen if you want, but it, it's just all mixed together with the houses, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you can put keywords in the search like, uh, acres, land, okay. uh, things like that in the, in the sidebar search. And, uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. And, uh, let me just, get, let me share my screen again and I can show people an okay. example of what we're talking about. Oh, that's not the right tab. Let me share. Um, I'm kind of new to sharing screens here with this software. This will be, here we go. Okay, cool. You see this? What yeah. I did is I just went to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma within 100 miles. That's the biggest radius you can get. Yep. And I went to home sales and then I searched for land up here. And yep. these are probably investors maybe that are advertising this land like this lot here. Um, I love how Oklahoma has the, uh, the, the red soil like that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, but this is, this is only within a hundred miles of Oklahoma city. You might have some property that's more rural than that. Um, but this guy's interesting. He has a YouTube video there mm -hmm. for that. Um, you don't know if this is listed with a realtor or a private investor, do we? Uh, land lookout. Is that what it says? Yeah. So this, this is an investor that lives in Phoenix who's advertising this property and his company, his Facebook page is called land lookout. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and he's a member of some land flipping uh, groups, <laughs> which tells you right there. That's interesting too, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so this seller information, is this, is this a, a personal profile or is it a business page? Do you know? that looks like a, a business page and okay. Um, it, it, Facebook uh, a few months ago relaxed the rules and uh, they, I don't, I know it was in groups and I can't remember if it was a marketplace, but they wouldn't allow you to post as a business or a group. They would only allow you to post as an individual. Um, but now you can um, and groups it's up to the individual who runs the group as to whether they want to accept a, a business or group in versus an individual, but most do. Now this is so, interesting. This is marketplace listings. He has nine of them and three of, uh, there's only three okay. different lots there. It looks like he just has repeated them maybe or something. Um, and then he also has here, this is interesting, buy and sell group listings. What does that mean? Do you know? Mm, good question. Okay. Um, so if I go to his profile here, oh, I, I know what they would be. So there's marketplace listings and, and it's just that, that guy, it's his, his ads that he's got on various groups versus versus, okay. versus marketplace. Okay. Now this looks like, a, this doesn't look like a business page. This looks like a personal profile that he created called land lookout. 
Yeah, could be. That's interesting. So, and his website here is landlookout.com. Um, so you could create a personal profile for your land investing business, maybe. Yeah, I, I just, you could go to mine if you want. Yeah, what is yours? Go to Mile High Rural Land. Mile High Rural Land. So this is a, um, uh, this looks like a page, right? Yeah, so that's okay. my business page. It's not a group. And, and it looks very much like a, a personal page as, as well. Okay, cool. Uh, and this is you, when you put a post here for a property. Yeah. Um, this is cool. Okay. And then uh, when you post a property into the Facebook marketplace, is this the profile that they see or is it, is it your name? It depends. Life. Sometimes it'll be the company, company, and sometimes it'll be the. Uh, more and more, it's the company because they loosened up on that. But we okay. also, I have a pro. You, you want to mix it up a little bit. Um, just it, it, there's different ways to create engagement without going too deep. But we mostly do it from the page, uh, especially in marketplace. But in some groups, like I said, some groups still. I think probably from legacy, they don't, uh, they don't allow, uh, groups to come or, or a business to come in. So then okay. we, we post under Dave Van Steenkist. This is cool. You have a form here on your page where people can join your buyers list. Yeah. That's cool. And that integrates with MailChimp. Yep. What are some of the, uh, I'll stop sharing the screen here. This is really interesting. What are some of the tools that you like to use for your business? Overall, yeah. So of course, I start with with Podio, and that that is more. It's really a business management. The land speed uh, built on Podio, which is um, it manages the entire process. But when leads come in, they 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 go into Podio. They get captured into Podio, uh, land speed, and then uh, land speed matches them up automatically with the right property that's in my inventory. And then it pushes it over to my true CRM, which I use as HubSpot. Okay. And HubSpot is wonderful as a, it's the, the free version does everything you need in, in this business. And then we use, um, so we'll use that for corresponding with our, um, our sellers, uh, our buyers. And it, it, it also integrates with a lot of phone systems too. So you can have all the history of communication in there. Um, okay. and then for the, um, newsletter and for our drip campaigns we use a program called mailer light there is you know mailchimp and the others as well but we've uh we use mailer light for that uh you know for anybody who's just starting out mailer light is free up to a thousand subscribers and then it goes to ten dollars a month at, you know and then you know so it's pretty cheap um and it works very well and you could set up a lot of automations in it so i use that uh and then um I use a program called Telegram uh, for you know real time communication with my team. Okay. Um, I love it because it's it's a very secure platform. It runs on uh, your desktop, whether you're running a, a a Mac or a PC, and it and it'll run. And it, it's completely emulated on your phone, whether it's a Android or iOS. So that works pretty nicely. Um, and then of course, uh, G Suite. Google, we use a lot of, you know, Google Sheets and, and whatnot. Um, and, you know, Gmail also integrates nicely with uh, HubSpot. Okay. So you don't have to actually be in the CRM to send and receive emails. You can just connect your your email to uh, to the CRM. Uh, works really nice. Of course, DataTree is one of my favorite tools, yeah. uh, both for building the list and also for doing due diligence and comps. Um, those, those are kind of the top ones. Um, there's a lot of different phone systems out there that are, that are really good. Um, you know, take your pick of the VoIP, VoIP systems. They're all pretty similar. Um, something that, uh, I haven't done yet that I am, um, wanting to do, and that is to integrate a, uh, a text messaging system, uh, to, to HubSpot as well. So I'm looking into that because, um, Texting, I've done a lot of deals by text. You know, people who don't want to get on the phone or it's late at night and we'll text back and forth. Yeah. Um, but then you don't you don't capture the conversations if it's on your phone. 
you know, so it's nice to have that integrated with the, with your CRM. I should show you what we're doing in REI simple because that's all handled in there as well. Oh, cool. Um, but okay, cool. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to actually show Facebook again here because that's what we were kind of talking about in this. Yeah. And you see my screen here. Yep. Um, I, I went to, I'm again, I'm at Oklahoma city center, hundred mile radius. I'm doing a search for land. I also said only show me the properties under 50,000. And uh, can you show me maybe an example of a good ad and a bad, poor ad like uh, this one? What do you think of this? Well, I wouldn't use that as my lead photo. You know, okay. you want to use uh, an attractive photo as your lead photo, even if, you know, every, everybody does it. We do it too, where, you know, you're, you haven't gotten your photographer out to a property yet. Um and, but you've got it. So you want to go ahead and list it. Uh, and I've many times actually sold properties with screenshots before my photographer got back, but, um, I would not, you know, use, uh, you know, that as a, as a, uh, I would, I would, I would use something, even if it's a screenshot, do like a Google street view and get a nice photo of the, that's, um, exemplary of the area. Um, and, a, and a, so you're not lying, you're not fibbing, it's nearby. Um, and I'll sometimes actually meme the photos and I'll put nearby photo makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. So this um, one is actually looks like they printed something off of a, uh, software onto a color piece of paper. Yeah. They printed something in color and then took a picture of it and it's fuzzy. It's not even, it's blurry. It's not even, I mean, I might include that in my yeah. photo gallery, but I wouldn't use it for my lead photo for sure. You want something that's pot that's oh that's beautiful let's let's click on that you know that's nice see that's that's beautiful here's a here's a lot with the power line in it i think that was probably intentional yep and uh twenty nine thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars two point seven acres owner finance yep. um i'm guessing that this guy is going to get some calls because he what do you like about this property as i'm showing it here with pictures and the well i the, like the fact that it's got trees uh-huh it's got power you know it, it looks nice and and flat to where it's buildable um you know it looks accessible because I, I mean i can see a one of those photos i can see a road yeah so it looks like it's got good access it's got you know the the nice attributes um accessibility power mm. you know that that's all a plus um now if it didn't have power that doesn't mean it's a bad property it's just uh going to be a little different price point what would you guess this if this was a if this was a property you were selling for twenty nine thousand dollars? How much would you have bought it for? Uh, if that's my cash price, I'd pay. But you know, depends how confident I am on 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 that price, you know. But if I but if I'm looking at it and my my the comps were all twenty percent higher than that, so I'm really confident and be able to get that price. And I know there's a lot of activity in the area, so there's actually deals being done you know, then I'd, I'd pay 10, maybe 12 for that. Yeah. I love um, it. Yeah. It also <laughs> depends if I, you know, if it's an area that I've worked before, I'll be more aggressive on my pricing. If I've worked an area before and I, and I know what I can sell stuff for, but if it's a new area, I might be a little bit guarded about my offer and offer a little less. I am looking here. He's probably, if he's charging whoever the owner is, he or she, sorry. If they're charging 10% interest, they're probably collecting $240, $240 a month on um, interest only payments. Um, if they're doing principal and interest over five years, the prime payment's probably going to be about 300 bucks a month for this property. Would you say it's about right? I can't read it. What are they asking for a down payment? Well, it doesn't say. Okay. Oh, I'm well, sorry. Here I it is. Here it is. 1500 down. Wow. Uh, 15 years payment 350 a month. So I said 300. So about 350 a month. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty awesome. And you know, we you could always go in too and find out if you had something like data tree, you could find out what he actually did pay for it. Um, which leads me to another question, Dave. Uh, and I want to ask you about a couple more ads here, but real quick. Um, do you, are, do you ever uh, start advertising the property before you actually close on it? Or do you wait until you close on it before you start marketing it? Oh uh, no, I'm all the time. I market it as soon as I know. Um, so 
if it's if it's a deal we're closing through title, which this one would be if I'm paying, you know, 10,000 bucks for it. Um, but I'm assuming if they're only asking $1,500 down, I'm assuming they probably, and 350 a month, they probably paid, you know, less than six or 7,000 for that. Um, but so they sell it on terms for that price. That's a really nice deal. Um, but um, I'm sorry, would you ask me again? Um I forgot too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Do you do you advertise the properties before you buy oh, them? Yeah, all all the time. Okay, absolutely. If I'm closing it through title and it's only a thirty day, I'm getting it up there as soon as I can, even if I have screenshots. And there are times, depending on the property, I've had it sold before and I've had it under contract before before I closed on it, um, uh, in thirty days. And then um, if it's property, I'm not very sure of. You know, I may ask for 120 days to close, uh, and 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 pre-market it. Um, yeah, we do the same. Our standard to close is 90 days. Yeah. Um, and with automatic extensions <laughs> until we cancel. Yeah. yeah. Now, I never got. I mean, I've done a lot of deals that was like an option, but I just do a long closing period. And yeah. um, it's interesting though. I never got burned on one until last fall. I got burned on two in a row burned, meaning the seller decided not to close with me. One, I know for sure he sold it to somebody else. Wow. Really? Now, yeah. You say you're under contract. I mean, I, I put a hundred dollars earnest money down with title. It's, it's not, you know, what am I going to do? Spend thousands of dollars going after him with an attorney. You're not going to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the risk you take on a long closing. Um, and so anyway, I lost two deals in a row in the same area. Uh, and those were easy 20,000. I had them sold. I got them sold. And then I went back to the seller and they reneged. Um, they were, they were $10,000 profit each. Could uh, you have uh, filed something to cloud the title? Yes, you, you, you can do that. And so that's something you could do with an option. If you do, so that's when an option comes in. If you do a memorandum of option and then go file it with the county, that works better than a long close. I've and done something that, before with uh, something called an affidavit of interest. Yep. Just saying, hey, there's. A, so you have to talk to a local title company about the best way to um, yeah. to do that. Yeah. And and I had done it so many times just loosely and never had a problem. But I'm gonna do it from now on. But but if it's a home run deal, if you know it's a home run deal or not a home, but a great deal, just take it down. Just buy it. If you don't have the money, partner with a with a money partner, and and buy it. Um, where do you? That leads me to another question I want to ask you. Where do you find? Do you ever run out of money? Where like you you've just you know you've just purchased too many properties recently, and they're all they're, they're all being sold, or they're in the process of being sold, and or there's buyers paying you money on it every month. But like I'm out of money right now. <laughs> so like, where do you do? Do you talk to your friends, family? Um, are there companies that will lend money on land? Yeah, there's, there's guys out there now that will partner with you as an equity partner. Um, in fact, <clears throat> we're offering a, uh, a new, uh, service. Uh, we are, uh, called, um, uh, 201 funding. Okay. And, um, the, um, uh, it's, and we have a partner in it, but, uh, people can, uh, come to us, uh, contact me and I can, I can, uh, get you connected. We're actually just getting the website up, but, um, 201 funding, or you can contact land MBA, our um, coaching program program. And, um, well, let's talk about that. How, how can people get a hold of you? And, yeah, um, so they, can, go ahead. Yeah. they can get a hold of me through Facebook, Dave Van Steen kissed or mile high rural land or, um, uh, land MBA. And um, the writing uh, on, for the screen here. Okay. And how does that look? Milehighruralland.com. Correct. That's your, that's your website where you sell your land in landmba.com. This is a new program you're putting together. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that the land MBA site will be up in the next couple of weeks. It's okay. under construction right now. Good. It's coming. And so, uh, if they want more information on this funding, the funding 201 or something, is that what you called it? Yep. And how does that work? Have you determined those terms yet? So there's two programs. Uh, if you are, if you are um, 
more established in the game and you've got um, uh, your own marketing, you're marketing it yourself and you just need funding. And then um, we're going to, we will uh, fund it and close it for you and we'll close it in our name. You go ahead and sell it. And then when we, when it gets sold, uh, the funds will get distributed to uh, up, up accordingly. So it's a, it's an equity partnership. It's not uh, a loan. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and if you're doing that, it's, it's a certain percentage uh, you get, it's better than anybody else is giving. Um, you're getting 60%. We're taking 40%. Yeah. Our partner is. And then um, if you want to do what we call sort of the bird dog model where you're new in the game and you, you just don't have time. You've been able to figure out how to mail and how to get properties under contract, but you haven't been able to set up the website. You maybe don't have the resources to hire somebody to do sales for you. And the only time you can call people is after work or on the weekends. Um, then we have a 4060 to where you bring the deal. We close it. We market it and sell it, pay you out 40% of the profit at the end of the day. The other thing we'll do differently than any of the other funders out there uh, in land is we will do terms deals. We'll, we'll put it in our, uh, we'll manage it and send you a check every month. Awesome. Cool. Well, what, that reminds me of another question too. What software are you using for your payments? Owner financing. Geek payment? pay. I'm sorry. Geek pay. Geek pay. Yes. That's great. G E E K like a geek nerd geek pay. Check that out. And Mark Podolsky owns that company and he's been on this podcast before. Yeah. It's, you know, there's other solutions out there, but Hey, it's a system created by a land investor for land investors. It's priced well. It works great. I've used it for about four years. It's fantastic. Yep. Very good. All right, Dave. Sure appreciate you having uh, being on the show. You're talking about land investing, talking about how it's working for you and your business, talking a little bit about Facebook. I wish we could have dove more in to yeah. that. But you talk about Facebook in your land MBA program that's coming out soon. I, um, Absolutely. I know I know Dave's a good guy. He spent time with me on the phone, helping me answering questions that I have. And I just wanted to return him the favor and get him on the podcast. He's, a, he's one of the good guys in the business. He's actually doing deals and um, he just loves helping people. And I, I hope you can see that here in the podcast. I appreciate that very much Dave for being on. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And, and I hope uh, to uh, return the favor and have you on our new podcast when it launches in April. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. That'd so. be cool. Milehighruralland.com is your company website. Landmba.com is coming out real soon. Yep. Um, and you, they, people can find you on Facebook. Is that right? Yeah. Dave Van Steen Kiss or Mile High Rural Land. Now, if, if you're listening to this podcast right now on audio, we're going to, if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, realestateinvestingmastery.com and look up Dave in the search bar, you'll find this episode and you'll see how to spell Dave's name. Okay. But I want to tell you, and you'll also get, by the way, a transcript of this podcast. So you can read the whole transcript if you want and see the video of the stuff that we showed you by going to our podcast website. But uh, his last name, Dave's last name is V-A-N-S-T-E-E-N-K-I-S-T-E. -E -E, Van Steenkist. Correct. Van Steenkist. Got it. Correct. All got right. It. Cool. And we've got a bunch of comments here. I didn't even... Um, uh, show these things, but I appreciate you all here from, um, Blund, Blund nation films from Greenville, South Carolina, Thomas from South Carolina. Nice. Steven in New Jersey, Ralph in Louisiana, Matt, Matt from Ohio is in the house. I know who you are, Matt. Um, Eric three frog. I know that name, but it is from, uh, Clarksburg, Maryland. Rochelle is here. Victor from Texas. What's going on? And, um, oh, Ken here is saying good stuff. Um, some people are telling me they want me to uh, do a mind map of how I'm doing my land investing business. Maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I will. Be, uh, that would be interesting. I do too many mind maps. I have like oh, mind map overload. Hey, thanks again, Dave. Everybody thanks. go to Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast and subscribe. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you listen to this on. And please subscribe to the show. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you, Dave. Thanks again. All right. Very good. Adios. Bye-bye.